welcome again. This time it's question two, science and principles. The question this time is about inductive reactants, capacitive reactants and impedance and current and power factor. So let's get on, let's have a look at the question. Here it is, question number two. Answer the following questions. Uh, we've got some Roman numerals here, that's fancy pants. The inductive reactants, the capacitive reactants, the impedance, the current and the power factor. Right, so let's just have a look at this little circuit we've got going on here. We have an inductor, we have what I'm assuming is a resistor, because it's in ohms, but we don't have a capacitor. so. There won't be any. So number two will be zero. There won't be any capacitive reactants. Impedance. Yeah, that's easy. We can do that. We're going to need our impedance triangles, perhaps. I need to consider them. Impedance, current, power factor. All of that is very straightforward. So I'm just going to draw that circuit again on my board. And we've got a resistor, 250 ohms. And the inductor size is 0.5 henrys. And it's going all the way around there and back to the source, which was 210 volts AC. And 55 hertz. Now the frequency is going to be important working out our inductive reactant. So let's start there because it's really the first thing uh, we should be trying to get. We can't do the impedance until we know the inductive reactants. We can't work out the current until we know the inductive reactants and we can't work out the power factor. So it's the first step. The symbol for inductive reactants is XL, L being inductor, and X being reactants. And the formula for that is 2 times pi times the frequency times the inductance in Henry's, in this case, nice and easy, 0.5. So our XL is a case of simply plugging that in, really. That's nice. So 2 times pi times the frequency of 55 times 0.5 and we have an inductive reactance of 172.79 and no, Craigie, no, 72.7 yeah, 9 that rounds up and that is in ohms because it's a barrier to current it's, well, it's swishing current in the wrong direction every single time it changes direction. Now, let's have a look at the impedance. So, symbol for impedance is Z. And the equation for that, we're going to use Pythagoras because we've got our impedance triangles to consider. So, we have reactance there, resistance there, and impedance there. And this is the relationship of these kind of three parameters, really. And this angle dictates what the power factor is. So the cosine of the angle is the power factor. And this just tells us how um, out of sync our voltage and current is. Uh, and that's important for efficiency on the circuit. So Pythagoras says that to get your hypotenuse, it's this side squared plus that side squared, square rooted covered that in a couple of other videos, so if you're not sure about that, have a look at that. We've already got the resistance, which is 250, that's just, well, come on, why do you make it? 250 ohms, and that's squared. And we're gonna add that to our inductive reactants, which is this part of the triangle, which is 172.9, 
nine ohms squared. Let's put it in the calculator. Square root of two fifty squared plus one seventy two point nine squared. So our total impedance, the total stuff getting in the way of our current, we got three hundred and three point nine six ohms. So that's our total opposition to current. So now we're in a position to calculate the current in the circuit. It's just going to be ohms law. Can you? St yeah, you can still see that. So. Ohm's law says that if we take the voltage and divide it by whatever's in the way, in this case we're going to use impedance, you'll get your current. And that leads to 210 volts divided by our total opposition to current, so 303.96 ohms, gives us a current of 10 by, by 303.96. amps. Not a lot. Okie dokie. Now, I said earlier that the power factor was, you know, the relationship between this side and that side. So, very simply, to get our power factor, um, I said it was the cosine of the angle, and if you remember from trig, you got Sokotoa. Well, we're going to use this bit of it, the car, which is the cosine of the angle, which is also called power factor for us, and that's going to be the adjacent over the hypotenuse, which in this case, resistance is the adjacent to this angle, and this is the hypotenuse, so it's going to be resistance over impedance. So thing the trig it is for a reason. It's you know normally relabeled and in disguise, but that's that's what we're talking about. So in this case we've got 250 ohms divided by 303.96 and that will simply give us our power factor because we don't have to touch the cosine button to calculate this. It is just the relation the ratio between that side and that side. So 250 divided by 303.96, 0.82, it's all right, not bad. So our power factor is 0.82. If you wanted to work out the phase angle, then you might need to use the cosine buttons, but just working out power factor, you don't need to touch that button. Right, have we solved the problem? It asked for the inductive reactance, tick. It asked for the capacitive reactance, which was silly, because there isn't any. So, tick, we should write, there is no capacitive reactance because there's no capacitor somewhere. Make sure you write that in an exam. Um, the impedance, uh, yeah, we've done that. And the current, yes, we've done that. And the power factor, yes, we've done that. Uh, another little kind of top tip, really. I mean, this, you're going to be an assessor's dream if you do this. So, I love it. I, I do get my, or I ask my students to do it. Some do, some don't. Just highlight the kind of final answers. It just kind of proves that you're confident in your answers and, you know, you know which whether you've actually achieved it or not. Some people kind of guess it right, and yeah, I don't, I don't like that. I want confidence. I want clear kind of presentation. Um, yeah, I think we solved that one. So, join me next time for question three. See ya.